So I think it's very clear, even though we're just over 10 days into this war, that predicting precise outcomes is probably a fool's errand. I think what we're seeing is a Russian armed forces that are struggling to take Ukraine. We're seeing a remarkable fight back from both Ukrainian armed forces and the civilian population. And we're seeing the world come together to apply pressure on Russia. And so this is going to be a tough fight. This is going to be a long fight. And it's very hard to predict nice, neat outcomes. Do you think Russia has committed war crimes? Yes. I think the indiscriminate nature of the Russian violence is shocking. I'm delighted that the International Criminal Court have already started their investigations. And I think Russia's armed forces need to be on alert for those investigations and the inevitability of war crimes, particularly as they carry on their violence and particularly as it gets more and more reckless. Will the UK provide Ukrainian military with more weapons and what would we be talking about? So I, the, I'm, the UK was one of the first, definitely the first in Europe to start providing lethal aid. The Defence Secretary just over a week ago held a donors conference and that brought together 25 nations to pool their resources to increase both lethal and non-lethal aid. And the UK has been clear that we will continue to provide both lethal and non-lethal aid. And that's anti-tank weapons, but it's also other weapons. But it would be, I don't want to go into the detail of some of those weapons. They will be defensive in nature, and we are clear that this is going to be long-term support to Ukraine. When you say you don't want to go into detail, is that actually for strategic reasons, as in to, to keep it a secret from Russia? No, I think it's about being really clear that what the UK is providing is both lethal and non-lethal aid. Um, it's to avoid us getting into precise numbers. It's to avoid us getting into the intricacies of this weapon over that weapon. We've been clear we'll provide lethal and non-lethal aid and that the, the lethal aid will be defensive in nature. How concerned are you that Putin might resort to nuclear weapons? So I, we, we are a nuclear nation. We have our own nuclear deterrent. We're part of the world's largest and most powerful military alliance. We, we need to be very clear and we need to be calm and responsible and not react to threats from President Putin. So we have our own defences, we have our ability to respond, we monitor Russia very, very carefully. We have been ex explicit in highlighting to Russia that this is a tragic war that's going on in Ukraine. The, there is, there's an imperative that it doesn't escalate even in conventional terms, and it would be insane for this to start a path towards a nuclear escalation escalation so we are ready and prepared and very clear of our responsibilities and our ability to respond but we don't see ourselves as 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 responding to every comment that president putin makes what more can be done we've got you know the support in terms of lethal and non-lethal aid there are the sanctions what, what are the next steps so the next steps are resolve. The next steps are to maintain our unity, maintain our cohesion, and maintain our resolve. And we will see increased violence. We'll see more, sadly, death and destruction on, in, in Ukraine. And we have to maintain our, our international resolve, our international pressure, because the person who can bring this to, a, to an end and to a swift end is Putin. And the, the pressure needs to be applied on Russia and it's, it's that continued resolve, that continued unity, and the cohesion across military, diplomatic, economic, political, social, cultural aspects that will bear down on Russia. Do you think Putin might actually want to go further, uh, Moldova, Georgia, Baltic states? There's a risk that Putin and what he said and, and his ambitions for a greater Russia might involve those countries. But I think what you're seeing is a President Putin who is failing, an invasion that is struggling, a Russia that is a lesser power this week than it was last week because of the, the application of the, world, the world's economic pressure, its social, political, cultural pressure, applying itself to Russia so Russia is a lesser nation. And that needs to continue.